What is going on guys? It's Real Touch GML here back with another Java game development tutorial and today is number 12 and today what we're going to be doing is actually setting up images for our game. So you know we will have uh, animation and images, well not animation this time but we will have images and all that fun stuff um, loaded into our game. So originally I wanted to just have these boxes you know and kind of have like that cool neat like uh, neon type glow effect but I realize that's not the best for tutorial sakes because we you guys might want to have images in your game and uh, and I don't want to take that away from you so that's what we're gonna do I'm gonna set up some images so what I went ahead and did is I went ahead and imported a block underscore sheet dot PNG and this is just the sheet I used for my Ludum Dare competition uh, you know we've got grass uh, or dirt grass lava coins all that fun stuff and then we've got player underscore sheet dot png which is just all of our player images and that's what we will be using all right so let's go ahead and get right into it so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and create a new class here not, not a new package new class and I'm just gonna name it text texture yeah we'll just name it texture and basically this is just going to uh, load all of our textures in our game <clears throat> all right now since we are using a sprite sheet for this we're not using uh, you know every single image as a different file we're gonna need to set up another class called sprite sheet so sprite sheet and this is going to set up actually breaking down our image in our images and uh, you know getting the correct one that we'd like so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a private buffered image. Image. And then you can control shift O to import that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the constructor. So public sprite sheet. In here I'm going to say buffered image image. This dot image equals image. So we're just basically being able to use this image so so whatever we put in this parameter here which is going to be our sprite sheet uh, it's going to use this right so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say public buffered image grab image and in here we're gonna have some parameters column row and then the width and the height All right, and so what this is going to do is it's, we're going to create another buffered image real quick, img, and this is going to equal image dot get sub image, and what we're going to do here is we're going to say column times width minus width. All right, and then in argument one here we're going to say row times height minus height. All right, and then width and height. And then we're just gonna return that image. All right, so basically what this is doing here, so here in our column, we're basically going to just put what row we want or what column we want. So basically if I went ahead and opened up the block sheet here, these are 32 by 32 pixels. So say we wanted this first lava pick here. What I would do is basically say, all right, so I want column one, two, three, row one, because it's in row one, right? So if we put in parameters here for our column, we want column three. It'll be three times our width, which would be 32. So it would be uh, uh, 96. And then it would subtract width, so it would bring it down to 64. And this is basically our starting point. So if we go ahead and go back into the block sheet here, our starting point for this would be 64 because it goes 32, 64. So it starts right at this first lava image here. And then the width would go to 32. And same with the row, same concept. All right. So now in our texture class, what we can do is set up the sprite sheet. So sprite sheet SS. Control shift O to import that. Or actually, it's already in the class, so we don't need that. And then we can create a constructor here. And also, let's do this. 
let's create a private buffered image um, block sheet and we can equal to null and then we'll create another buffered image player sheet and that equals null and in here we're just gonna say actually we're gonna need two of these now then so we're name this BS and PS for block sheet and player sheet so in here we're gonna say BS equals new sprite sheet and actually yeah yeah, yeah. and then we're gonna put in block sheet right here and then PS equals new sprite sheet player sheet now we haven't actually loaded the block sheet or player sheet yet, so let's do that now. So I'm gonna say buffered image loader, and we created this in our last tutorial. Loader equals new buffered image loader. And we're just gonna surround this to try and catch. Exception E, E dot print stack trace. And then here we're gonna just say player sheet, or we'll use block sheet because we started with it. Equals loader dot load image forward slash block underscore sheet dot PNG. And then same thing with our player sheet. So player sheet equals loader dot load image forward slash player underscore sheet dot png and this is case sensitive so make sure that it's exactly what your file types are all right and then we're just going to call a new method get textures which is we're just going to create down here so private void get textures and then this is going to handle getting all of our textures so in our game let's go ahead and create an instance of this so texture text and then let's have this start off right away so text equals new texture let's just have it you know be created right away so we don't get any confusion with actually accidentally creating something that uses a texture beforehand and all of that stuff um, and then what I'm gonna go ahead and do since we are gonna need texture for for every single class well basically our player our, our block our coin when we get when we get to it I'm just gonna create a method that is going to allow us to just get the instance of this so public static texture get instance uh, and then we're gonna return texture or no, return text uh, and then go ahead and make this static there you go so now in our player class we can easily just get the instance of that so like here for example we'll go into the player here and instead of saying texture text and then putting it into the constructor texture text and saying this dot text equals text all we need now we need to do is just say texture text equals game dot get instance and now our texture class is able to be used so we'll copy that and go into our block and say the same thing alrighty so now in our texture class let's go ahead and actually fetch our images so in here I'm gonna create a public buffered image array and we'll name this block and this is gonna equal new buffered image and we'll just say two because we'll just use the grass and the dirt for now and in our get textures we're gonna say block zero equals bs dot get or grab image column on row one 32 32 and this is going to be our dirt block and then block one equals bs dot grab image uh, column two row one 32 32 this is going to be our grass block now we could actually create two different blocks for our seemingly dirt block and grass block but that's not very efficient 
So what I'm gonna do here is just go ahead and say in our parameters int ID or no I'm sorry int uh, type and also create it up here private int type and then say this dot type equals type and since we're just basically changing what the image looks like we're not changing any properties this would be a better way of doing it so here all I'm gonna say is if type equals zero dirt block and we're gonna say g dot draw image text dot block zero at x y and null and then we need to cast these to integers and then if we copy this and we paste it down and we say if type equals one grass block then we want to going to go ahead and put text block one and in our game here we're getting an error because we now we need to just change this so if we say zero this will be our dirt block so now everything is going to be our dirt block we're getting an error here oh let's just get rid of this all right and we run it oh okay it worked as you can see we now have a dirt block for every single block in our game which is pretty cool And then if we change our game here to one instead of zero, everything is now grass. So pretty cool, pretty cool. All right, so now let's go ahead and do the player. So for our player here, let's go and go to the textures and let's create another buffered image array. And this is gonna be player. equals new buffered image and how many images do we have here well let's check let's see we're gonna have one two three four five six seven let's just load the first one to begin with and then in later tutorials when we start adding animation then we will load the next the next couple of images so I'm gonna say player zero equals PS dot grab image column one row one with I believe is 32 by 64 I believe let me check that yeah that should be correct all right so this is going to be our idle frame for player and so let's go into the player here and basically in our render method instead of draw rect let's copy this we're gonna say g dot draw image text dot player zero x y null. And we go and run it. Ah, there we go. We have it now. Actually, it's a little small. So let's. What's our actual width and height? Did I set that 48 by 64. So I'm just gonna scale the image here to 48 by 64. Uh, actually doesn't look quite right. Oh, 96. My bad. There we go. Now we have our player image. So there we go. Uh, let me go ahead now and cut away and I will be right back. Alrighty, so I am back and let me go and run the game here and show you what I did. I went ahead and created a cool little level. Um, and that doesn't really block us from going that way, does it? Uh, I went ahead and created a cool little level that just kind of shows what we can kind of do with this this uh, sort of texturing or whatever. So as you can see, we have the grass on the top here, and then you know we have the dirt, and it's a cool little level. I mean, there's there's not really anything you can do, but uh, it gets the point across. Let me just go ahead and show you the file I made to to use that. So here we have um, the level here. And basically, I just used a different block or a different color type, and I checked if that this is a 128 all around value. So in our game here, I went ahead and just said, you know, if red, green, and blue equals 128, then just give the idea of one instead of zero. All right, so go like, go and subscribe. Let's try for 50 likes this time, and I hope you guys learned something. And I will see you guys next time. Peace.